And this is the island where I finally actually incorporated the, the trade quest that I had sort of intended for the town before. Let's see, do I have any room? Yes, perfect. Cannon. So there's this guy here, he takes all of your rum. And, um... Yeah, there wasn't really, like, a really, like, perfect reason for why that is. I mean, I really just sort of thought, you know, what's something a pirate would really want? Well, he wants lots of rum, because he's shipwrecked. And pirates love rum. Something that sort of inconvenience the player. If you're really smart, you'll sell most of your rum, so only have one left. And that way you sort of have the most cost-effective, you know, trade. I was lucky enough to only have one rum when I came here, so there you go. Ah, hippos. Flying hippos. I, I forgot how ridiculous these guys are. I really just... I don't know, with this island, I really was sort of like... Scrapping for ideas with enemies, and I was sort of like, uh... Trying to come up with something ridiculous and original, and I thought, uh... The flying hippo. Yes. And they're... Weak to electricity. Actually, that was something I decided later. Because I had it set up so that the hippos are weak to electricity, and there's the trees that are weak to fire, and then there's like the peg faces, which are weak to fire, or ice, ice. So there's like three different weaknesses. And you might start to get a handle on like using the different elements that are now available to you. While you level up your guys. The cool thing about this island is that we have this item training quest, which is which seems sort of boring, but it go, actually goes by pretty quickly, and it sort of forces you to run like a few rings around the island, so that you fight lots of baddies and you level up your guys who are sort of behind. Another thing I like is that uh, when you first join up, like your two, the two new guys, are really low level. You generally compared to the two like older, lo like the higher level uh, guys you've been using before. And it just sort of outlines, like, you know, like, yeah, these guys are new to piracy, and they're sort of here under your protection, and you're helping them out. But then gradually, thanks to the EXP curve, um, they sort of catch up. And then eventually they become, like, full-fledged, like, same level as you, effective members, and uh, a big part of your team. So that's pretty cool. And there are a couple situations in the game where, like, the levels sort of tell a story like that. Peg faces are, um, they're sort of based actually on like a Dr. McNinja thing. It's a Dr. McNinja, this really, really, really awesome webcomic about a doctor who's also a ninja from Ireland. And uh, there's this part where he fights a bunch of pirates and he's just like, he turns off the lights, so you don't really see it, and you just like sort of see him talking and you hear like these sound effects as he's sort of slaughtering like this entire crew. He's like, oh, these guys are going to need peg legs. Oh, this guy's going to need peg arms. And he's like, ha ha ha, this guy's going to need a peg face. And then he just basically cuts off, like, everybody's face. And then later you meet these pirates who have peg faces, just like that. And it's really funny. And, uh, I thought, I mean, yeah, I thought it would be, like, a really funny enemy to have in the same vein as, like, the hook head. So sort of, like, a, a hook monster and then you have, like, a peg monster. Never did like an eye patch monster, but I couldn't really think of a good one for that. 
And uh, after the Sound, there's actually never really like a, a good situation to have like a, one of the more of those silly enemies because things start to get really like. The islands after this all really have like specific themes already in mind when you get there. There's not really space for like, you know, a silly enemy like that. So I never got to put it in. I guess it would be like a giant walking eyeball with eye patches or something. Goggles are pretty useful for like the weaker guys for now because uh, they don't really the normal attacks don't do very much. Um, and the powerful battle items is sort of it's it's made by averaging the strength of all of these guys. So in essence, like when these guys use battle items, they're a lot stronger than their normal attacks. So basically, they become sort of the chief, the only guys really who should be using battle items at this point. So giving him goggles is pretty good because he is sort of like the battle item user. All right. And now I have a rare banana. I really wanted to do like really 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 silly item names and stuff for this training quest, but I don't know, I guess I don't have very much imagination cuz I couldn't really think of like really hilarious things. There are a couple small ones though, like the guy lost his toupee. You know, whatevs. Oh yeah. Where are we at right now? My levels are actually still pretty low. I guess I shouldn't be too worried because I'm really good at this game and all, but. Yep. Hmm. <laughs> doop. Doop. All right. Oh, that's really weird. He was learning all these moves, but they weren't, like, being added for some reason. Is that a bug? Oh, no, you know what happened? That was because I jumped all those levels when I, like, cheated. And I never actually, like, leveled him up normally, so he didn't, like, learn those moves when he was... Oops, yep. Silly me, silly me. Alright. Um, I'm not sure what my time is. I'm gonna call this an episode here. This will probably get chopped into two episodes or so we'll see so yep okay i will see you guys sometime <laughs>